My name is Elizabeth Clark and I'm the CEO of the YW Kitchener Waterloo and I'm a regional councillor representing Kitchener. It's a long, long history and there's a lot of projects. I think, uh, looking back, I think I first became involved back when it was the Social Planning Council in 2000 or 2001. And at the time, the city of Kitchener had been identified by the federal government as one of the municipalities in Canada with a homelessness problem. So we had received some funding, which was called Skippy at the time, and it was to do homelessness prevention initiatives. And part, a condition of the federal funding was that we had to have a community-based steering committee or advisory board that uh, sort of made decisions about the spending and, and sort of set some parameters around that. And for some reason, and I think it was a logical choice, the Social Planning Council was, was identified as the, um, the organization that would help facilitate that. So my first introduction to Trudy way back then was as the chair of that, that committee. And we were, uh, my agency does anti-homelessness work, so we worked very closely with her back then. Since then, in, um, in 2001, we became uh, their landlords, so we worked in the same building and that just led to an awful lot of different projects and partnerships that we did together over many, many years. Yeah, there, the, there's really a couple of things that, that I always think of as quintessentially social development center things and, and one is the, um, the, the uh, uh, meet the candidates meetings, the tables. That, um, that the Social Development Centre hosts, and they've been doing that for quite a few years. When they started it, uh, we actually co-hosted with them, and, and I thought it was a really crazy idea because it was so different from the sort of candidates' debates that everybody else was doing. But um, what they do, if you haven't had a, an opportunity to go, is that they, they, they aren't debates, they're, they're, they're conversations, there's, there's communication. And the, uh, the candidates aren't the stars of those, of those debates. The candidates sit and listen to people from the community, and including and um, primarily people who, have, who are marginalized, people who have lived experience of the issues that are, that are being raised. And I think that's just, it's such a cool model. I've not seen it done anywhere else, and that was really, uh, that, was, that was the way Trudy thought of things. So uh, that's always stood out for me. The, the most recent project was one that, Again, um, Trudy was a very uh, complicated thinker, and uh, this was a really complicated exercise, but it was really rewarding. What, what she was trying to get at was um, addressing the, the barriers that people who live in poverty experience by sort of mapping their journeys. So, so uh, it was really a, a, a physical map looking at, you know, this is what happens when you go to get financial assistance and then you get sent here and this is the barriers that you face when you get here. And uh, it was a really long process and it was, it was um, um, complex, it was a facilitated process, but it was because it was so important to Trudy that she have people with lived experience that were really leading that kind of work. So however long that took, uh, she was willing to put that in. And I, again, I think that's something I've never seen anybody else do, something, something like that. It was a research project and uh, the results were going to be used to uh, inform policy at, at uh, certainly at the provincial level and, and I think also at the, at the municipal levels. Well, I think that she really was the visionary behind it. I think that it, the, the sort of unique approach that it took in terms of really being led by people with lived experience was, was something that, that she brought to it. I've seen other uh, similar types of organizations where, where they are more mainstream in the way they do their work and, and um, they, they do good work. It's not to say that they don't, but, but uh, this was something that was important to Trudy and I think that's really, it really colored everything that they did. Well, I think back to what I was saying about, about um, things becoming more bureaucratic. Um, back, back in the initial days when I was first working with Trudy on the, uh, the Skippy funding and that community advisory uh, board, we were, we were much more um, bottom up, I think, in the way we tried to do things. Now as more uh, responsibility for social services has been downloaded to our municipal government as a service manager, I think things have become a lot more bureaucratic and a lot more top down. Now there are, there are advantages that things, things can happen uh, more quickly when you have an approach like that, but I think it does miss some of, some of the, uh, the heart and soul that Trudy brought to the work. 
Well, it's evolved so much over the years. I think early on it was it uh, was very much of a, a an information um, generator and warehouse, and and I think it's uh, it's moved to be much more around community engagement and mobilization than it used to be. So uh, more direct advocacy work and more working with with the communities. And I think um, an example would be the work that they're doing right now with the, uh, the neighborhood um, in, in Kitchener, the trainer neighborhood, and uh, you know, trying to help them augment their voices and, and learn how to you know, work with that system. And I think that's been very, very, very effective. Yeah. Okay. Um, has your involvement with the SDC impacted your own values and interests on work? If so, how? Um, I do think um, about the, uh, the, the need to involve people who are receiving services in a, a much more meaningful and um, fundamental way than we often do. You know, we, t we, we can have people on boards that are really there as tokens. We don't, really, um, we don't really empower them in the way that they need to be empowered to be able to participate fully. And Trudy was always able to do that. So I, I do think about that as a sort of model for um, the way work should be done. I would say uh, don't lose that, that connection to the, the ground, to the grassroots. And, and I, and I don't, don't think they are. I see that they're, that they're certainly continuing that sort of work. But I think that's the piece that the Social Development Center brings that's completely unique. Um, that's something that government doesn't do and that uh, the, the agencies that are providing services may or may not do. But I think that's, that's really the value that's there and, no, and nowhere else.